Like many of us, I'm sure you're feeling it. Business is hard, and now more than ever, you need to have a plan to help you not just survive, but thrive. And it can happen as simply with thinking with the end in mind. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a business growth strategist, and I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for your future exit. Because a business worth selling is also a business worth owning. And I'd like to share strategies that I've earned and learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I have something to share with you guys. I've put together an insightful Think Outside the Box live masterclass. It's only a 15-minute training, and it's been specifically designed to help you learn how to get your business sale ready. Even if you aren't thinking of selling yet, why now? Join me to find out all the benefits that come with a sale-ready business. Register for free at www.scale2, and that's the number, to, to sell.biz. That's scale to sell.biz. All right, I'm really excited to have my guest on today. We're going to have a great conversation. Uh, Anne has been, uh, been there and done that. She has created her own agency and now helping other business owners create agencies that allow them to thrive in their zone of genius. Business owners who work with Anne are able to provide the highest level of service to their clients, creating a trickle-down theory of, or trickle-down effect. Happy and healthy CEO equals happy team and happy customers. Prior to starting her business, Anne spent over 15 years in physical therapy field, where she thrived and managed at managing the operation side of the business, along with supporting multiple other rehabilitation managers in the area. She quickly realized how much of a correlation there was between health of a person and the health of a business. After working with Anne, business owners work in the most efficient way to, uh, to streamline their business and run their business saving time, money, and frustrations. Ooh. She is able to take the big goals that seem overwhelming and break them down into achievable steps. Getting your notebook ready because Anne is a wealth of knowledge to help you make better decisions for your business. So Anne Hill, thank you so much for joining us on Profit with a Plan podcast. Hi, thanks so much for having me today. Great. All right. So you mentioned that you were running uh, physical therapy business um, and operations and running those. How did you get started and in, into becoming really truly where you are today? Yeah, so I um, was a rehab manager at a skilled nursing facility. So I worked in a kind of a major corporation. It was a, a nationwide company that I was with. And um, I, at the time, um, actually even pre starting my business, never really had intended on being a business owner um, and never really thought about being a business owner. I went that original, you know, like path that, that a lot of people do where you go, you know, high school, then college. Then I went on to PT um, school. And then from there went into um, a, a job being a physical therapist and, and then found that I really loved not only the therapy side, but I loved doing um, the management side. I enjoyed the operations. I enjoyed, you know, thinking differently and looking a little bit more at the analytical side of, of really being um, running our department, being in the business side of it a little bit more. Um, and then after having kids, I was looking for something new. I had um, gotten a little burnout from the healthcare industry. Um, and unfortunately that tends to happen a fair amount in the U S um, with the way the healthcare say, industry very, is very, very stressful uh, field to work in. And this was even uh, pre-pandemic as well, so I can only imagine what it would have been like um, going through the pandemic. Um, but in 2019, I, I started my business, and um, I found a program and started off with, at what I classified as a general VA, um, really just helping business owners with whatever they needed help with. So um, I, I would not classify myself as being good at very many of these things, um, but I did some email marketing, I did some social media. I built a website. I, you know, I just, I dove in and just started learning how to help people. Um, but then I found myself with the business owners that I was working with, I found myself going back to that operation space. So I would ask them about their processes. I would ask them about their, um, what their ultimate goal was. I'd be looking a little bit more strategically at, you know, what are they doing in the business and how can we try to grow the business and, and looking at the back end of the systems that go with it. And, um, and so I came across the director of operations certification program and um, really honed in from there on like, oh, okay, yes, I see now 
operations is what I was doing as a rehab manager as well, except I was working in the department versus like working just in the back end of the business. Um, so I was able to take the experience that I had and then also turn it into even more of the support that I can do and that my team can do with, um, with businesses that we work with. Wow. It's amazing how they can label something that you're already doing, right? Yeah. So you're thinking, oh, I've just got my hands doing here and over here. And it's like, I can see how this can change. And then now all of a sudden somebody labels it, you know, by having the school on it. But, uh, you know, it's interesting the the educational model that we go through um, in business and the difference between, you know, you had a skill set, right? And that skill set enabled you to do something. And then a lot of business owners will now wrap a business around their skill set and think that they've got it on when they're missing so many different pieces of the company and how to run the company that they can't even see because they only know their, their, their skill set. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I see that even more so in the online space as well, that, you know, people have a service, a skill that they're good at and they love doing it and they want to do it. Um, And then when they're really good at it, then they get a lot of business from it and go, oh, no, wait a minute. I don't know what's going on. I didn't realize I was running a business. So what is going on now? (laughs) So, (laughs) Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely an eye opener. And and we've talked about it many times here on the show of how business owners, you know, just because they have that skill set doesn't mean they know how to run a business. And then oftentimes they get in the way of the business running properly because right. they don't have the skills to do it. Um, so what are some of the areas that um, business owners can focus on on the operations side so that their business can run a lot easier? Yeah, so I would say a couple of probably similar to the things that, that you recommend, especially when you're looking to sell is, is really looking at um, at the systems, looking at do you have a process that is repeatable that others can can come in and, and start implementing in that same system and working the same way? Um, or is it 100% dependent upon you? Uh, if it's right. <laughs> 100% dependent upon you as the business owner, then it's probably going to be limited on how much it can grow and how much it can scale. Because as one person, we only have so much time in a day and everybody has the same amount of time in a day. <laughs> so um, <laughs> We're trying to fix that, are we? <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's looking at, okay, what is it that I do? How do I do it? And is number one, is that the most efficient and effective way of doing it? And number two, is this something that can be repeatable that someone else can come in and start taking parts of it or eventually taking all of it? You know, that's, that's a great thing because, um, you know, we do do everything, right? We, we bootstrapped our business, most of us. We bootstrapped our business and, and got going in it and then started doing everything in there. And they forget that there are things that they shouldn't be doing, you mm-hmm. know, and, and looking at it, whether it's online or in person or the brick and mortars, or you're an attorney, which I just got off a phone call with an attorney telling her the same exact thing, <laughs> stop doing everything. Yeah. Um, and, and it's so hard for us to let go of that control. You know, is, is there a trick to, to feel confident in handing, you know, tasks and duties off to others when, you know, it's your baby? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think there's a, a few things that, that play a role in that. Um, and as much as I tried to fight it when I was starting my business mindset is probably the biggest part of it that that really plays a role. Um, I, I tried to fight the mindset side um, for as long as I possibly could, but really it limits your growth if you don't get your head wrapped around how to grow and how to do it mm-hmm. in a great way, an effective way. Um, and that comes with with delegating. You need to be open to the idea of somebody else being able to come in and do work just as well as you do in your business. Um, or even 75% as and good as And that's what do. I was going to say. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's even better than what you do because that's their sole focus and they're not being spread too thin. And so sometimes they come in and they even do a more exceptional job than how you were doing it before. Um, so, so just being open to the idea that someone else can come in and do some of the work in your business. Um, another part of that also comes with the idea of effectively delegating the work and being able to not necessarily be that micromanager, but, but give somebody, and it's over time. It's not something that happens immediately, but, but giving somebody the ability to start making the decisions and you focusing more on the outcome of what you're delegating to them than every single little step along the way. Yeah. Just because they're not doing it exactly the way you would have done. It doesn't mean it's getting done, not getting done. 
Did I say that right? We yeah. want it to get done, but it doesn't have to be exactly the way you would you would do it. I think that that's um, you know a, a big challenge that business owners have is that mindset. You know, they think it's a little woo woo, you know, but it's yeah. not. It's just it's thinking in a different way. And as we started the show off with, you probably didn't have the business skill set. You had your talent. And so everything around business is going to be thinking a different way and yeah. using folks like yourself to come in and give you that viewpoint that maybe you didn't see in the past. Um, I, th I think that that's really the piece that, that people forget is I've got to learn. Yeah. And also, you know, bringing people into your business is scary at times. Um, it doesn't have to happen from that initial, like, okay, I'm going to be bringing on a full-time employee 40 hours a week. I, I need to be able to I, support this person and do X, Y, and Z. Sometimes it, it can be a contractor. Sometimes it can be a part-time employee. Sometimes it is a full-time employee, but there are different options as to how to start bringing in support into the business so that it's not as scary to you. Um, and then also really having a clear understanding and communicating with your team members of what you expect of them and what their essentially what their metrics are that they need to be meeting in order to continue to help support the business. I love it. I think one of the biggest fears is, is, is bringing someone on and can I support the payroll? You know, right. I think that's the first block that they have to get over. And, um, you know, I'm a strong believer that the people you bring on are going to pay for themselves. They well, they really should will. as long. Yeah. And that's where, as long as you start to provide, you know, uh, the expectation and the accountability and are, are having the metrics there to be able to show and that they know what they're working towards too. Um, mm -hmm. But when you have those things in place, then you are able to, like you said, have them start to pay for themselves, whether that's potentially truly in the revenue, if they're more on that sales and marketing side, or if they are, are more on that operational side, are they paying for themselves by allowing you to have less stress, allowing you to have more time in your day, allowing you to have that creative visionary time in your schedule. So there are ways that don't necessarily have to equal specifically monetary um, value to your business. Still, so. Exactly. With, with time, money, or, or effort, you know, there are always places that someone will free up somebody else's time so they can do the sales or yeah. they're operating so that when the client, you'll get paid, right? Or the client will get the follow-up so they stay with you and potentially buy again. So yeah. there's always those pieces that someone comes in with. Um, but I know that with, you know, money is always the fear with, with the early hires of can yeah. I afford it? And, um, and once they get past that, I think they can then start thinking about, wow, it's really going to help my business grow. And my philosophy, and I know this is something that people always miss. Well, I don't want to grow. Growth isn't always getting bigger and bigger and bigger and, and what it um, achieve market domination. <laughs> that was the word, <laughs> what a friend of mine said. But if you're not growing and in innovating and improving your systems and processes in your business, then you're actually dying. That's yeah, that's very true. Definitely. Yeah. So how could, how could we look at those systems and, and kind of get the owner out of the way? Because I know, I, I, I coach to this a lot, that the owner is the bottleneck. They're blocking the road. They're, they're causing more of the problems than they realize. <laughs> how do we get them out of the way? What are some of the ways we can do that? Well, one of the big ones is uh, it, actually what I had mentioned previously, where, where the, the decision making, if, when you are delegating tasks and delegating work to others, the decision making doesn't continue to, to circle back to the business owner. So, and like I said, it happens over time. It's not something that happens immediately, but, but when you start to have someone help you, um, you know, start to phase yourself out of having to take that brain space and having to follow up and having to look at those things. Um, you know, set it up, set up the system in a way that, you know, within the first month, you aren't doing anything with that task anymore, or you are, you know, 50% of it is, is you, the rest of it is not anything that you're doing anymore. Um, so when you're building out your systems and when you're first starting to grow the business, the more that you can think long-term, okay, how can this happen without me being in it, the better it will help in the long run. Now, a lot of times that's hard because like you were saying, when we first are starting to grow the business, 
we are wearing so many hats that, that it is hard for us to be like, well, how on earth is this going to happen without me being involved in some way, shape or form? Um, but when you're bringing on those team members, when, when you are training them and going through that process of the training and building out your, you know, your metrics of what everybody's going to be held accountable for, set it up in a way that you are not having to really make any of those decisions still, and that you are not having to, um, oversee it as much. So, um, like I said, it doesn't happen overnight, but, but the more you can set those up in a way that you're basically saying, how am I not involved in this anymore? The easier it's going to be in the long run for the growth. A hundred percent (laughs) easier. You know, I mean, we have, we're, we're business owners, we're entrepreneurs, right? We have this kind of like this control thing where you know <laughs> I want to control every moving part that's going on in everybody's day. What are you doing? How you do it this way, do it that way. And you know, that hurts us in the long run. Um, and, and I think that it's so much easier when, like you said, you trust mm-hmm. that the person that you've hired for the job, you've done your due diligence in your interview process, you've set up those clear expectations for them, you've given them a task to achieve. And it's not a task of do one, two, three, four, five, but it is complete this project, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that gives them, like you said, the authority to make decisions of how they're going to do it and achieve it. And, you know, they may come back and say, hey, I found an easier way to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And also I think it's, it's critical for us to understand that at least, you know, most of the time we're business owners, we're hiring people that that we feel are competent and capable. Well, let's let them be competent, (laughs) capable adults. Like let's trust that we hired the right people. Um, And let's trust that we, like you said, went through our hiring process and spent the time to train someone so that they can be successful and be with us potentially long-term and continue to grow with the business as well. I love that. I know it's such, it's such a, it's such a crazy time to do, to, to be earlier in your business. I mean, and, and, and go through the hiring process. I've got a couple of clients that are doing that now. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm like shaking the business owner, you know, going, you need to hire this person to do this job. And they're like, what? I can't, you know, so (laughs) it's, it's just, it's, it's that fear thing that keeps getting in the way. But um, I think it is really, truly important that, that we as business owners for the sole purpose of running a better business, having to be more profitable and the potential down the road to sell it, you've yeah. got to get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let the go. You know, uh, what is a, uh, uh, Jeff Bezos is not in there in the, in the, in the lines of boxes going through Amazon. <laughs> right. In the assembly line there. Yeah. Yeah, for right. sure. <laughs> He's not doing that. He set up people to do it. And I think that's where, a real growth opportunity for businesses is for the the founder to become the leader Mm -hmm. and to step back. And I think that that's something that's that's super uh, important and often overlooked uh, because of fear. Because of fear. So, um, so you talked about, um, you know, the idea of, of having the owner um, higher right. There are other ways that, that an owner can get out of the way and be more leader than just hiring people in there. What are some of the other things that we can do? Um, well, basically when you're building out your systems, um, you wanna try to be as, as, streamlined and as, as streamlined and as efficient as possible with what you're doing. There's ways that you can automate things and automation doesn't always have to be a bad thing. I, a lot of times right. people say, oh, you know, if you automate everything, then you're completely removing the human touch and the human being out of it. Not necessarily. If I am sending the same email after a networking call or after I close a client's account every single time, there's no reason that I can't somewhat automate portions of that and have a template set up and have have things set up in my business so that I'm not spending five minutes rewriting the exact same email to be sent out. So there are ways that you can utilize automations in an effective way that still allows you to have that human touch and that human connection with people that, and, and your clients that you're working with too. I think that's really important to, to repeatable, repeatable processes that, that something that's done on a consistent basis absolutely needs to be automated. And, and, and automation could be using technology or like you said, just having a template, right? Right, right. Um, it doesn't have to be that you're, you're setting it up on an autoresponder where you never, you know, you hope that that email was delivered on time. Right, right. But, 
<laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be high tech here. And, um, but I think that that's really important. And um, what are your thoughts on innovation as well? I think the innovation is something that we can do too. Yeah, definitely. The more that we can, like you were mentioning, the more we can set up our business in a way that we have some of that, really some of that clear white space on our calendar so that we can start to think and be creative and look at new opportunities. Um, not only just new opportunities, like in business in general, but new opportunities for how we can grow as a person, how we can grow as a contributor to society. Those sort of things too are definitely critical in just who we are and how we run a business and how we can um, step up into more of that leadership type role. I love it. You know, white space, that's, that's, that's an odd, um, uh, an odd thing on my calendar. These days. <laughs> you know, I used to, you know, I used to, oh, I got to fill it up with busy work and, you know, oh, I need to make these calls or do that kind of stuff. But, you know, running a business takes, takes time to step out and, and look at the big picture of what are my long-term goals? How are these how is this function of this department running better, you know, and, and like you said, having white space on your calendar to be able to do that is yeah. important. Well, and it's really it, important. And also having those trusted advisors that you can look to and, and have that outside perspective in your business, whether it's somebody you hire, whether it's somebody that you collaborate and have a mastermind with that sort of thing. Um, doesn't necessarily matter either way, as long as you're getting that outside perspective in your business and you're able to, to have somebody look in and potentially ask questions and see things that, that you may not see just because you're so close to it. Well said, well said. We, we, uh, I have this, every time I think of this, I, I have this picture or graphic of a, of a man with a briefcase on an island with a tree and the island's only, you know, so big around it. And there's all this water and sharks around them. And, and that's the way a lot of us run our business <laughs> is all by ourselves, you know? So we don't have the input of others to, to, help, to help with growing or solving problems. And, um, you know, those advisors definitely help as, as we often do. But um, yeah. yeah, you know, okay. So, so with this, you know, we've got white space. We're, we're, we're looking on growing. We're looking on bringing on team members. That's a lot to put on a business owner, right? <laughs> you know, is, is there any one of those that, that are a top priority for growing your business and making it a little bit easier to run each day? Well, I think it's looking and strategically planning it out so that you're making essentially the right moves at the right times in your business. Um, if you're always in a position where you feel like you're coming into work every day and or coming into your business and and you are um, essentially putting out fires every single day, it's probably not a good spot to be in to, to look for the future, to look to grow. Um, so if you're able to make sure that as you are kind of getting that outside perspective in your business and figuring out really what is the next right move to make right now so that it may trickle down and impact five other areas of my business. If this one thing is fixed, um, then that's where you want to really spend the most time and energy on fixing that one thing and then reassessing and figure out what the next right move needs to be. Sometimes that is hiring. Sometimes it might be something specifically with a little tweak in some processes. Um, sometimes it might be just actually unplugging for a little bit and taking some time away. So there's a variety of different things that really can have a big impact um, in the business. Um, but it's really just making sure that, that when you're looking at your business as a whole, that you're kind of getting outside of it and taking that bird's eye view instead of just trying to put out the fire every single day and moving to that next fire instead of the next right move. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's where the leadership and taking items off your plate. Um, one of my advisors always used to say, well, look at your plate, right? And, and for many of us, we're looking at our buffet, right? Because right. it's not yeah. just our plate. There's <laughs> so much going on. But looking at that plate and moving things off so you do have time to yeah. focus on growing your business or, or innovating your business or scaling your business or doing what you need to move your business forward ahead of your competition in the market, which is key. Uh, for any kind of growth, but I think uh, I think we have to evaluate and 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 stop stop trying to work the business instead of working on the business and making it grow. I yeah, think, uh, you know that's it's really funny because I start getting these images of you know of, of coming into work and you're putting out the fires because maybe this system isn't working or you don't have that system yet. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I find a lot of times business owners, when I'm talking with them, they, they think, well, I don't have processes. I don't have systems in place. I don't have X, Y, and Z. So I can't hire anybody. And, and mm. I, there's two things that I think along those lines is number one, if you are bringing on that first team member, that first employee, that first contractor, and the goal is for them to help offload some things, then again, have that communication with them and set the expectation right off the bat. Hey, we're going to build these systems together. I don't have it set up yet, but I need your help in making sure that moving forward, any other new team members basically have these things in place. So utilize that person to help you set up your systems. Um, second of all, you do have processes. You may not have efficient processes, but there's a way that you do what you do. So there is a process there. It's just potentially a matter of whether it's, you know, a strategy session with somebody outside that focuses in that operation space or whether it is, um, like I said, talking with a coach, that sort of thing, but they'll be able to pretty much pull it out of you and see that you and then have just a write it down. Yeah. <laughs> then write you, it down. This is how you do it. <laughs> so you can't have everything up here between your ears. You've got to have it in writing somewhere. Right. And sometimes it's even, you know, a lot of us are like, oh, I gotta write this down. Well, you can verbalize it. And there's software like Otter that can, you know, take your words and put it in writing for you where you can yeah. speak it from there. But yeah, great, great conversation on on having you know, a, a process and you have a process and you can create it in little steps. Yeah. You know, yeah, like definitely. Quite daunting to go, oh, well, I've got to have an operations and a hiring and a delivery and we've got to have that email campaign and we've got to, you know, <laughs> or I have, I even recommend to people to record themselves doing it the first, you know, when they're doing it in the middle of it, just record yourself doing it, especially if it's something, you know, technology related, record yourself doing it talk yourself through doing it and then have the uh, show that to the person that you're bringing on and say, this is how I currently have it set up. You may know a better way to do it, but like, this is how I currently do it. So I love um, it. I love it. Yeah. That's, that's a way to get a, a system in place. And again, if you don't have systems written down in place, you can't duplicate them. You can't improve them. You can't innovate on them. Right. And then you can't sell your business. If it's all up in between your ears, I can't right. sell that. Yeah. Well, and you, it, it. it will never continue to run with you not right. being in it if it's all in between your ears. So, yeah. Um, so, so that's a, that's a funny question that, that is really hard for a lot of the folks that I work with is to get them out of being the business. You know, um, they are the business because they have the, 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 the skill set, the, the title, the education, you know, they are the attorney or they are the CPA or bookkeeper, or they are the chiropractor, or they, mm -hmm. you know, they are the plumber, you know, they're, they're doing that, you know, that's something that, that I think is definitely teachable and repeatable. Well, and and I think also there's a, a level of support when you truly need another expert. Like, I mean, a lot of times people think they want to bring others in their business and they want to train them up from the beginning and not have to necessarily quote unquote pay as much because they are, you know, training them and they don't, and they don't have the title or they don't have the degree or, or that they don't have the money to pay yeah. the, the person right, with the right. higher skill set. Which, you know, obviously some of the things you mentioned there, an attorney needs to be an attorney. A, a chiropractor needs to be a chiropractor. You know, there's some things where but there's entry do. levels. Yeah. Yes, definitely. But I think there's also the ability to bring in some support in your business in other areas that don't need those degrees, that don't need that extra skill set. And then as you're growing at, at the right point, there will be the need for another expert. It's just mm. how it goes. Um, maybe even, you know, two or three experts, you never know, depending on what the business is, but there will come a time when someone does need to be at a little bit more of that expert level. And in order for you to remove yourself as the business owner, you truly need to invest in the right expert, but, but in, in another expert in, in that area. I love that. I, I love the word invest because we are making an investment in our company. When we started it, we put our sweat, you know, blood, tears, nights, weekends, yeah. a lot of our savings into this company to grow. And there's always continuous investment into it, mm -hmm. whether it be more time, more money, or having more people come in. Yeah. And, and that's, I love that word because it really truly is an investment in something that will pay you monthly revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And it will pay you a lifetime revenue when you go to sell it. 
if you build it properly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, wow, this is this has been a great call, and <laughs> you know, we we know you and I know we're in we're we're in the in the trenches all the time talking to business owners and founders, going, "You're in the way, <laughs> get out of the way." <laughs> and and it's like you know, if you just could see it the way we saw it, which right. I hope, I hope we, uh, I hope we articulated in, in the ways of looking at your business from different angles today. <laughs> so where can listeners find out more about you and your processes? Yeah. So my website, hilltopoperations.com is definitely the, the easiest way to either get in touch with me or find out a little bit more about what sort of things I, I do with clients. Um, on there, there also is a, um, it's a free hiring playbook there's a spot that somebody can, if anyone's interested, they can, you know, just scan down a little bit on the page and there's a spot to, to grab yourself a, um, hiring playbook that has some tips and, um, tricks and that sort of stuff. And it also has a few, um, I guess, unique interview questions that aren't necessarily the standard ones that you would think to ask or find, you know, if you did a Google search on it. So, um, so that I find is a little helpful for people too, is to know after you've, you know, got your applicants, but what do I, like, what do I, what do I do next? How do, what do I ask what them? Do I ask How do I know them? if they're good or not? So, so yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, you know, it is really important to, to know what you're going to hire them for. And at least, I mean, not all the systems and processes, like you spoke about, you know, you can have them help you build the processes together, but that requires, um, a different, a different person that you're hiring, right? So yeah. you're hiring someone that's open to helping you create, right? Mm-hmm. So they've got to have that creative nature with it. But uh, yeah. I like it. I like the tools. Um, you know, hiring is very scary uh, for a lot of people. And um, I know that uh, any help or guidance that they can get will, will make it a lot easier and give them the confidence that they're doing the right thing at the right time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. All right, listeners, I hope you found an idea or two to put into your business that will help you be more profitable. So now more than ever, don't forget it's time to build your business like you want to sell it. Don't forget to register for my new free 15-minute training on how to get your business sale ready, even if you aren't thinking of selling it yet. As we've mentioned, there's tons of benefits to having a sale-ready business like more freedom, more money, and an easier-to-run business. Go register for free at Scale two, and that's the number two, sell.biz. That's scale to sell.biz. You won't want to miss this class. And Anna and I would love to hear your questions or comments. What, what have you done? What kind of system have you been able to put in your business that freed up your time and got you out of the way a little bit as the founder and enabled to um, you know, really give you that mindset to, to grow your business in the right direction? So. So don't forget to comment on today's show and hey, subscribe. We'd love to uh, see you on future podcasts. And as always, you can catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. We're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with us. Thank you, Dan. Thanks so much for having me.